Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Jangir Badar Sumro, Assistant Professor Electrical Engineering Department, Sakarai University. Uh, this is the third and last part on our discussion on the paper Design and Control of Modular Multilevel Converter for Voltage Seg Mitigation. We have discussed introduction portion, the designing and components portion, purpose system description is already covered up to mathematics is already covered, inner current loop, dual synchronous reference frame is already covered, circulating current suppression control scheme is already covered and we will start from 4.5 description of outer loop controllers for proposed system. Alright, so this is basically the inner and outer loop control for the rectifier station. Let's discuss first rectifier station. So as already discussed, rectifier station is responsible for DC voltage control and for AC voltage control. So the output of this outer loop will be ID reference, this one, and the output of this AC voltage reference will be IQ reference, this thing. This goes to inner current control. This is the measured current of ID. This is measured current IQ. This is positive sequence component. And this portion is negative sequence component because here the grid unbalanced grid is considered. If the grid is unbalanced, both positive and negative sequence components will appear as already discussed in the previous video. All right, so a PI controller is uh, used to ensure that ID is tracking ID reference and IQ is tracking IQ reference. After that here, the output from the inner current control is two quantities, UD reference and UQ reference. Here this reference will be zero. We have to eliminate this negative sequence component, so this will be eliminated. Now this UD reference and UQ references should be uh, should be converted back should be converted back to ABC so it's again converted into ABC and here we get uh, so here is the circulating current suppression control algorithm that is the, the block diagram is already discussed here from V differential will come or VCC it can be also labeled VCC so we have to maintain this imbalance voltage or differential voltage to maintain and suppress the circulating current because the potential difference between the legs will be minimized, the circulating current will be minimized. So this will be feeding the reference, this reference value will be fed to this, uh, this V reference here. They will be added and here we have a nearest level modulation technique from nearest level modulation technique we will get we will have getting signals and these getting signals will be feedback will be given to the switches of the IGBT this is how this rectifier station con uh, overall control mechanism works fine so you see and this equation is the PI controller uh, which is Kp plus k uh, proportional integral values, PI controller, diff reference difference between DVD reference minus VDC, you get ID ref, you get ID ref. Similarly, VAC ref minus VAC and this PI controller, you get IQ ref. Here you get IQ ref, okay. These are outer loop equations for, uh, final equation for uh, outer loop controls. And the equation for power control so active power control is controlled by this equation basically by changing the id reference you can control the active power all right so this is the output of dc control dc voltage controller mmc rectifier so you see that uh, one per unit 
it's conver converted into per unit and uh, it shows that DC voltage is properly tagged. Desired VD reference is ensured. And uh, uh, the desired active power is ensured at the rectifier side and DC voltage is ensured at the rectifier side. Similarly, this is the overall control mechanism, overall control including outer and inner control loops at inverter station. Inverter station is responsible for controlling active power, equation is already shown. So here the output of this outer loop control active power will be ID ref and at the inverter AC voltage control is used and this output will be IQ ref, same mechanism, the rest of the control portion is uh, very similar, these things are very similar as already explained. So this is active power control, you can see that active power control is properly tracked. These are the values of circulating current separation control. This is a re reference signal voltage. Uh, reference signal voltage for nearest level modulation signal. It's almost sinusoidal. These are the parameters for this model. DC grid reference is 135 kilovolt. All right. So these are the uh, values for uh, steady uh, during steady state conditions. These results are during the steady state conditions. These are some module voltage rectifier, inverter, the ripple in the sum module voltage, rectifier side inverter side should be minimized, should be less. These are arm currents, these are capacitor voltages, rectifier and uh, inverter side for three, uh, for A, B and C phases, three phases. Now we discussed dynamic and transient results that what happens if there is a dip of the asymmetrical fault dip for minus 60 percent magnitude for for the time period of 75 milliseconds now here comes the concept the fault right through technique suggested here is that uh, to to compensate the need uh, the need for this energy missing now this voltage dip will result into some energy missing this energy missing is compensated by uh, energy is stored in the capacitor. So inherent prop, uh, storage property of the capacitance is utilized to overcome this uh, voltage dip, voltage seg mitigation issue. Voltage seg is mitigated using this energy storage capacitor. This is the equation for energy storage in the capacitor. The capacitance of the capacitor is uh, 10.48 micro millifarad and the submodules voltage VSM is 2.25 kilovolt. The installed energy of some module as per the above equation is 26.53 kilojoule. Energy is stored in one arm and face leg of the converter is 1.591 megajoule and 3.18 megajoule respectively. The installed energy of three phase MMC converter with 60 sub modules is 9.5 megajoule and energy is stored in back to back MMC is 19 megajoule as per calculations. Now during asymmetrical fault in the overlaying grid side, the capacitor submodule should safely discharge. Now missing energy should be compensated by capacitor and the capacitor will safely discharge to compensate for that energy loss made by the voltage sec during asymmetrical fault. Agreed. The modulation index of MMC is 0 0.8. So this shows that uh, the DC voltage should not be reduced to a very low value. If it ideally it should be tracking one per unit showing that it properly takes the desired reference but it if goes very low from one per unit to maybe 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.3 then it becomes a great challenge for inverter inverter will operate in our modulation and our system can collapse so, so we do not want this issue to happen so it is very important to maintain the dc link it, it is very important to maintain the DC, uh, that DC link is not uh, discharged heavily and DC volt, uh, under voltage should not uh, happen in a severe condition. We have to manage the under voltage issue problem. So the DC voltage should not dip below 0 0.8 per unit in order to ensure that our system stability is ensured successfully. 
and the threshold of capacitor discharging is decided by steady state modulation index mmc therefore the mmc rectifier allows dc voltage drop from 1.0 per unit to 0.8 per unit without affecting its operation so during the fault condition the internal energy storage of mmc rectifier mmc unit should have supplied 10.4 uh, and 12.4 of installed energy respectively as the energy discharge approximately 0.896 per unit and 0.87 per unit the instant energy mmc rectifier mmc unit is shown here you see now this is this energy is supplied by rectifier and inverter station to compensate for the loss of the voltage sake energy stored mmc rectifier discharge to approximately 0.896 per unit to compensate energy loss caused by the voltage sake in up stream ac gate the installed energy mmc rectifier 9.5 megajoule only 10.4% installed energy 0.9 megajoule is discharged to compensate the effect of transient voltage sake without affecting the operation of mmc rectifier okay now you see the, these are the power oscillation in the power due to the voltage sake asymmetrical fault and you see uh, the dc link drops from one to some value but it should not drop below 0.8 otherwise under voltage will happen and it our uh, it will become challenging for the mmc to operate and mmc will have to operate in our modulation so we don't want this to happen we want ideally this dc link to track the reference value and we don't want both cases under voltage and over voltage both are dangerous so this is showing that when there there the voltage dip on the rectifier side power power is uh power is reduced active uh, power drawn from the grid is reduced and during this time uh to compensate this loss in a, a capacitors need to discharge the energy this is active power scenario this is reactive power scenario you see this problem is uh, uh quickly mitigated and then again fault right through is ensured here we can see that despite of that voltage sake there is no effect on the power delivered to the load power delivered from mc inverter load is not disturbed and this is the this is the advantage of uh, this technique that load side power is not disturbed and we don't want to disturb uh, our load so load is supplied continuous power constant power and this asymmetric fault does not have any effect on the load and it also does not have any effect on the inverter output voltage and inverter current both are sinusoidal having tld below 5% meeting the standards of ieee so it is concluded that uh, the transient voltage sake of about minus 60% for the period of 75 millisecond the worst case scenario in a stream ac gate is controlled effectively by back to back mmc rectifier and mmc inverter so table 5 summarizes that uh, uh, as compared to a for mentioned methods such as dvr and others this mmc based voltage sake mitigation hvdc is a better option uh, but the only challenge is the initial cost is very high for an mmc hvdc system so this paper concludes that uh, if there is a problem of symmetrical or asymmetrical fault at the grid side of the mmc hvdc system then this Uh, loss of the energy can be compensated uh, by the energy stored in the capacitors uh, and uh, it was discussed that uh, using the internal energy of the submodules transient voltage sake due to asymmetrical fault with a magnitude of minus 60% for 75 millisecond up stream grid is mitigated effectively uh these are the future work and limitations and investigation to ac grid stabilization and reactive power injection into up stream ac gate with the back to back mmc fault handling and detection studies for internal sub module of mmc exam mining and simulating internal sub module fault and detection as well as exploring arm short circuit current in the fault yes this is true in this paper aggregate model is taken uh, in aggregate model individual sub modules fault study cannot be performed so for this fault handling and detection studies for internal submodules 
we need to go from the aggregate modeling to detail search modeling so detail search modeling and fault handling and detection studies for internal summer mmc is missing in this study techno economical study in the library analysis for back to back modular convert yes uh, another issue is that uh, certainly uh, cap- uh, due to increase capacitor sizing and dimensioning cover cost of the converter station will increase so it's a question that uh, will it uh, how challenging it will be to bear this cost how much cost is going to increase so take no economical studies is missing in this paper more of a reliability analysis is missing only a certain type of type of fault is taken it is very possible under some worst condition this voltage may uh, dc voltage may go down below 0.8 value and then uh, capacitor energies will not be sufficient enough to Uh, to overcome this issue and our all system will collapse so uh, this system is good enough only uh, for s- for certain some kind of faults where we ensure that uh, the dip in the under voltage in the dc link is not very high uh, and uh, the study also misses uh, the scenarios where uh, the our voltage may happen in some situation our voltage will happen so how the behavior of the this system will be in our voltage scenario in other situations is still missing what will happen if there is a dc pole to pole short circuit fault is missing and so many aspects are missing moreover uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned this is not the optimum solution optimum solution is that without uh, increasing the capacitor dimensioning i mean uh, your control should be robust enough it should automatically switch i mean if the if uh, if the if there comes uh if the if there comes a fault uh in in the station where dc voltage control is uh, mitigated if that uh if it it cannot uh, regulate dc voltage then the next station uh should be responsible to uh, track the dc voltage i mean concept of troop controller should be implemented uh so Uh, there are also possible other ways uh, this is one of the way in which researcher has suggested this approach uh, the limitation of this scheme is as follows short circuit individual modulus will flash over faults between two arms between converter arms cannot be simulated using the model since the aggregate modeling strategy is used uh, which con- t- considers only the entire converter arm moreover some other uh, yes this is true that individual module level faults are not uh, discussed here moreover Uh, some other faults in it like what happens if one converter station fails for few tem- for, for few second temporary fault occurs on the te- complete rectifier fault station or temporary fault occurs on the inverter station uh what the reliability of system under those scenarios is still missing missing study it's not performed in this paper as well so overall this research paper is inspired from the sun uh, research work which i will discuss in my later video so for the beginners this is a very good paper and they can learn basics of the mmc hvdc from this paper uh thank you very much